All righty. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to the first of our special. Uh, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to the first of our special two part webinar series, Shift Happens, Taking Your Career to the Next Level. My name is Rebecca Solomon with the FIU Alumni Association, and I'm really excited to jump into this first session focusing on how alumni can leverage changes in the workforce. And I want to introduce our guest and subject matter expert, John Nicolasian, Director of the Office of Business Career Management at the College of Business. John, thank you so much for joining us to chat about something that I think is really important to a lot of our alumni right now. So we thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to be here. I'm really yeah. happy. Awesome. So um, I think we're just going to get started here because we only have about 30 minutes. So um, John, when we had first started thinking about what to focus this session on, we talked a lot about the Great Resignation and how much is changing in the workforce as a result of what's happened um, you know, to the global economy and, and the world with this pandemic in the last year or so. Um, and so I, I thought maybe we would just start there, if you could just talk a little bit about what the Great Resignation is and what that could mean for FIU alumni who might be considering making a career move. Yeah. So again, thank you. And it's an honor and a privilege. Uh, it's always nice to, uh, to give back. I too am an alumni. I didn't have a chance to tell you that, but I am a, a proud class of 1996. Wait, there it is. Behind me. Uh, a graduate <laughs> um, college of business. So uh, I, I think right now, right now, historically, we're in a very interesting time in the world of work. Um, we've always referred to these things as pendulum swings where it's, oh, it's the, you know, it's, it's, it's the right time for employers. Oh, it's the right time for candidates. And right now we're in a very good time for candidates. And a lot of that was brought on by the onset of the pandemic and then uh, the, the, the rise in the expediency of remote work. And now everyone's migrating back and things are changing and, and, and the environment has, has completely changed. So right now it is a very strong candidate driven market. And so now is the time, and I know we had some conversations about this, but now is the time, if you're thinking about making a change, it's the clock is ticking and you need to start thinking about it now and taking it seriously because this will not last forever. Like every market, it goes up and mm -hmm. down and the pendulum will swing. So it's important to take advantage of it while you can. So, so what are those trends that you're looking at to help you predict like when some of those shifts may come back? Well, so last week was an interesting week. The, uh, the Department of Labor put out something called the JOLTS report and it really looks at job openings in the market and job openings dropped um, from dropped to 10.4 million from 1.1 million job openings in August. So hiring started to slow down a little bit. Okay. And that actually has a huge impact in my world where I sit because we are kind of, we're not kind of, we are a forward facing office where if things start to slow down, we'll see it in college recruiting first. And that will have an impact on our students, our, our current students, our recent graduates, and ultimately, depending on where they are, the alumni uh, in that process. Um, and so there's been this giant, uh, there's been that shift, which is kind of the prevailing, the start of the prevailing headwind, um, as well as other sectors, uh, you know, posting more jobs and more people resigning. So in hospitality, uh, more people are starting to resign. There are more job openings in hospitality, in, um, in uh, believe it or not, education. Uh, there's been, there's been um, I think public schools have, have also uh, cut openings as well. Um, so so there's, been, there's been some declines and resigns in these areas. So it's, it's really, um, it's, it's a little tricky right now. <laughs> So for alumni who are thinking about making that career move, like you said, you know, this is the time to do it. So, so what should they be thinking about as they're making that decision? I mean, is the grass always greener on the other side and, and what should they be looking at? Well, you know, I think now, now is the right time to get your house in order. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean, now is the time to do the research, don't delay, 
if you're going to make the change, you've got to seriously commit to making the change. Um, no, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Um, this we know. Um, but we do, and we do know this um, from our own personal experiences and, and what we've seen in the world of work, um, you're going to make more money if you leave and go to another employer. You're going to get that 10%. If, I mean, if you're a good negotiator, you'll get more, but you're, gonna, you're going to make more money by leaving mm. your role and going to another organization. If you stay with your organization, you can, you can expect the, anywhere between the 1% to 3% increase the annual increase, if you get an annual increase. Um, but if not, if you want to accelerate, you're going to have to leave and go to somewhere else to do that. So it's mentally, you know, preparing for that, A. B, it's, it's getting your house in order, um, getting the resume together, getting it to look right and getting it to look bulletproof. Mm -hmm. um, another, another thing would be, and everyone forgets this, it's, you know, getting your references in order, you know, making that phone call and saying, hey, I'm going to make this change, lining them up. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the last thing you want is your buddy to get blind, your, your former manager or, or your colleague whom you've given their name. You don't want them to be blindsided by a phone call. Hey, Johnson, mm -hmm. job. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> so that's, you know, it's, it's about, it's about getting that getting that house in order and getting getting mentally prepared and then actually starting to prepare to do that. The resume, mm -hmm. the references, the research. Um, now is the right time. And the clock is ticking. It's it's it is ticking. We're we're seeing it with that with that jolts data and we're we're seeing we're seeing that you know a lot of other factors come January, February, come Q one of next year, um, there might be some significant slowdowns in growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the reference is a really important point because I think, you know, we all have those people in mind that we know we're going to put down, right? We know that they're going to say good things about us because we have a good relationship with them and we've proven our value. Um, but giving them a heads up is always a good thing so that they're ready to receive that call uh, because you really don't know when those are going to happen. No, no. Yeah. I have them prepared. <laughs> That's a great point. Um, and so let me ask you this, for people who are, are maybe unhappy with a few things in their current role, but aren't necessarily ready to make the jump, what are other things that they can be doing um, to try to either negotiate, you know, other trade-offs to stay where they are beyond just salary, because, you know, you know, that's obviously the lead indicator, but, yeah. you know, what else is there? Well, I, I think that, I think that now is also the right time to make the case for now is the right time to make the case for um, a change in work parameters. So, and by what I mean by that is, if if you if you now is the right time to say, hey, look, I want to I want to be able to go remote. I want to work remote, or can we put me on a modified schedule? Mm -hmm. You you have you have you always have a choice. No no one is no one is stuck. Uh, there's always mm -hmm. a choice. Um, but the but if you're if you like what you do and you like who you do it for, um, or if you are at a point where you feel like okay, well, I I, I don't want to up and move, but I, I need to have I, I'd like to get some something. Now's the time to have that frank, open, and honest conversation. But and this is a, a good caveat. You want to also prepare for that. Don't walk into that and just like drop it on your boss's desk, like you know, yo. I want to, I want to work remote, you mm -hmm. know, you, they're like what, you know, it's, it's almost, it's almost like preparing for asking for more money, but right. here are all the reasons why, and here's what I'd like you to consider. And Hey, let's have a conversation about this because it's important to me and I want to stay working here. So yeah. framing it is framing it is important. And, and I think, you know, if you walk in cold and you just drop it on your desk on, on their desk, uh, you're gonna. The, the results may not be in your favor. You want to <laughs> be prepared. You want to uh, have the homework done. You want to talk about your successes. You want to talk about why they should allow you to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use that now. Is the but the again the clock is ticking for that as well too. Yeah, and and so 
if, if people are making these considerations and they decide, you know, okay, it's time to, to make this move, um, what are those considerations they should be thinking about when they're, when they're looking to make a transition, whether they have something else lined up already, obviously is ideal, um, but if they don't, what are the things that people should be thinking about? Well, I think right now, a lot of people are looking at, uh, you know, the opportunity to work remotely. They're mm -hmm. looking at commuting time. They're looking at, um, they're looking at, uh, you know, obviously compensation. One of the, one of the core tenets of career counseling, if you, if you really want to boil down career counseling into three very simple things, three simple questions, it is really, you know, what do you specifically want to do? You know, what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> um, and everyone's got a different answer. And, but, but everybody has that, that dream job, that, that ultimate goal, that desire. The second part is, you know, who do you want to do that for? Is there a company you've always wanted to work for? And the third is, where do you want to do it? And with the build and with the with the addition of remote now in the mix, you don't always have to be in the same place, or you know you, you you're not tied to the to the to the location anymore. That's mm -hmm. changing. You know we've seen this now with, you know, Facebook and Google and Twitter. But last week PwC Pricewaterhouse Cooper said they're going to let their employees work remote. That's a big deal. That's over forty thousand. Mm -hmm. that's a that's a huge deal so now yeah. and and by being the first to move on that they are sending a message in the industry that you know this is one of the, and it's just going to attract more talent it's a it's, sure. a it's a brilliant move but the downside to this is and this is the converse this is another very real part of the conversation they're going to normalize salaries for the market so they're going to normalize your salary where you live. You're not going to make the same money. You know, mm -hmm. everyone, everyone said this, I said this a while ago, um, you know, you can live in South Florida and work for Facebook, but they're not going to pay you Silicon Valley prices. Right. You're not going to get that. Set. So again, educating yourself, there's that trade off there. Um, but I think, I think the, the core thing is, is being able to understand that and ask that. And then, use that as part of your strategy. So, you know, I really, really want to do this. I really, really, really want to try to get into this area or field. This is who I really, really want to work for. And we all have that list. I mean, you know, I, I had companies that I really, really wanted to work for. I had an opportunity to do that and I loved it. Mm -hmm. It was a great opportunity. Um, and, and location gets a, you know, location has an extra variable now because the rise of remote work and, and connectivity is is has changed the game there too so so that's exciting yeah yeah that's that's an interesting point about the location you know driving some of that salary competition and stuff because i think people think about remote work as something just like this great alternative but there it, it doesn't it doesn't mean it's perfect you know there's other things you have to consider yeah um and and what so that's an interesting point about Price Waterhouse Cooper. What what other adjustments are you seeing like major employers make um, in order to retain talent because you know they're concerned about losing people in this process? I think they're I think you know obviously number one is is the remote piece. I think mm -hmm. they're they're looking at that. Um, you know another another thing that I'm see another trend that I'm seeing grow in the marketplace with great traction is companies are listening to their, if they have employee resource groups, if they have employee groups uh, that employees are identifying with, they're listening to them, they're taking their suggestions to heart and advice. So, um, and, they're, and, they're, and, they're, and they're granting a little bit more power in that area. So, you know, um, a Latinx ERG, um, uh, LGBTQ plus ERG employee resource group, um, they're, they're, they've always been there. The rise to prominence has, has, has been kind of going on in the background, but now it's even more important because individuals are looking at organizations and saying, okay, I can see myself here. I can see myself growing here. I can see myself continuing to work here. There are people that look like me, sound like me, talk like me, or are allied like me. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's another, that's another nice factor, uh, that we've seen that's come out of this change in the shift in, in the, in the marketplace is that 
uh, firms have realized that they have to start listening to the folks in these groups and, and, and in these areas because that's what's going to keep that's going to not only keep the talent there and engage, but also give them a great recruiting pipeline and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and a leg up amongst their, their competition. So if I can, yeah. if I can go to a firm where people look like me, sound like me, talk like me, um, you know, and it's not just fluff employee, it's not just fluff employee branding, but it's, you know, they're walking the walk and talking the talk. Yeah. That's going to set another, that's going to set a, um, a company apart. Yeah. And I think that's really important to people when they're looking um, and in the process of this job search is, are the employers doing what they say they're going to do for their employees? It's not just, you know, free coffee or, or whatever the, the case, the incentive might be, but that they're really um, listening to their employees and, and trying to find out what's important to them and how they can best, you know, provide that to the, to the best of their abilities. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a big deal. I mean, you know, I think gone are the days of, look, we've already, we've already, I mean, people make fun of it on Twitter. Let's not, let's not fool ourselves. You know, like a, a foosball table or a pool table is not going to be a great draw, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I, I mean, right. <laughs> okay, that's great. But what if you're yeah. really foosball and you can't play pool? You right. know, why, why, how is that, how is that exciting? You know, the dress, yeah. you know. Can I go casually dressed? I mean, do I have to really put on the suit and talk? I mean, look, we all, I don't know about you. I did put on a few pounds. For <laughs> I noticed I had to buy some shirts that were a little, a little, uh, the colors different size. Were, yeah. Different <laughs> size, but you know, thank God the ties don't have a, a size on them, but you know, but I haven't, you know, I have, I, I wear ties for special occasions. This is important. Mm -hmm. I want to look good. Um, but <laughs> You know, if I can get away with it, I, you know, that's a big draw for me. I, I like my yeah. jeans. I like, I like not having to wear a tie all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, mean, I think that's why remote work was so attractive to people, right? That was, that was a big part of it was like, I don't have to be up an extra hour early to make sure my clothes are ironed and, and all of that. You're only going to see this much of me anyway. So as long as this part is appropriate, we're good to go, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. People love that. So, okay, so for our alumni who have decided that they, they do want to make that switch, um, I think a lot of what we spent the last year doing is be, being really introspective. Now, this is purely me speculating in this process. This, this part is not data-driven. But in that um, process of being introspective, what should they be asking themselves? I mean, like you said, what do you want to do when you grow up? I mean, that's still a big question for a lot of people. Um, it, it, where do you think, I'm just wondering, like if someone says, you know, I'm ready for something completely different, um, what, what are some things they can be, can be thinking about? And is this a good time to just maybe try out some new things you wouldn't usually apply for just because there's so much open out there? I, I think, I think, um, to, to, you know, give you a trite turn of a phrase, but you know, Wayne Gretzky and his famous quote, you miss 99% of the shots you don't take. Um, and and I and I'm and I'm not a big fan of like oh let's let's speak in you know lo, you know quotes and and you know successories that are on a wall, but I do think that now is now is the it's 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 the it's the one time generationally again where there is so much going on that if you don't try to take advantage of this you are going to miss this opportunity. Mm -hmm. And, and I, and I can't, I can't really stress that enough. I know we read about it and we're, you know, we're all, we're always, we're bombarded with all of this news in the news cycle, but we, we see it, we see it in the marketplace, you know, we see it in, in, in everyday things, the supply chain's backed up, you know, mm -hmm. so we know that's going on. It's, you know, we're nice, we're nice to people in restaurants because they're overworked. There's not a lot of staff there. Um, we can't get the, so now is the opportunity to if you if you see that void if you see that area or if you said you know i really really want to try this so mm -hmm. this is this is another twist to that caveat uh, or to that to that thing you don't have to quit your full-time job to try mm -hmm. it you know and and i think people are are thinking this is a binary yes it's either this or that it's either that one or that zero and and i want to say i don't think the answer is it's 
you know, offer on or quit or, you know, jump in both feet. I think you, if you've always wanted to try it, now is the time to try it and make that determination if this is going to go full time. Mm -hmm. this, this is the great experiment period, if you will, um, while we're in the middle of this shift to try that, to see it um, and, and, and gauge if you can take that risk. Um, but I, I do believe that I do think you can do the research, ask the questions, network with the individuals. This is, this is, if, if not now, when? When, yeah. And I, and I say do it now. Yeah. You do it now. Yeah, I mean, this is the time, right? I mean, we ha have you ever seen a marketplace like this before? I mean, I can't imagine another set of circumstances that would have gotten us here. <laughs> I, you know, I so I'm one of those nerds. I look at like, I look at, history and companies and 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 kind of like how things are growing and you know being a miami native going to school down here um choosing to stay it it, it working in some pretty interesting industry you know in, in in tech and a couple other industries it's it's it really gives you this like i really have this weird perspective and i always paid attention to companies coming and going and growing and doing um and I think, you know, I think the closest thing we could say is this is probably, I mean, and this is this is pure speculation, and I don't have data for this, but I think if we look at if we look at the economic expansion post World War II, and we look at you know the the the, the growth and the boom there, and then we look at how now this pandemic has forced us has forced this shift into the you know this has been you know this has happened. Um, I think we're going to see, and, and I think a lot of the, the research that's been, been coming out and some of the news articles that have been coming out, we're going to be behind the eight ball with certain industries and jobs for a while. Mm. Um, and, and so that's going to cause a major shift in the marketplace, similar to, you know, stuff that happened in our world generations ago that we weren't around for. So, yeah, I think, I think, yes, it's definitely, I mean, I've, I've, I've chatted with friends that are older than me and they've never seen it before. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, and, and I highly respect their opinions. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. It's, it's, it's very, very different. Um, and I'm always reminded of a, of a quote. I had a, a mentor when I, uh, when I was working in, uh, in the Gables at a, at a firm and he always reminded me that the same word, I think his quote was, the same word for crisis is the same word for opportunity in, in China. And so he said, so it's just a matter of, you know, what's your perspective? Is Ooh. this a crisis or is this opportunity? And I was like, okay. And that kind of, and then that, and that was, you know, the 1990s and the internet, the go, go internet boom days and, you know, I have way too many stories that I can tell you, but not on a Facebook live. <laughs> I'll plead the fifth on that one. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. No, I like that crisis and opportunity because yeah, I mean, both provide two different pathways and which way are you going to go? Yeah. You know, yeah. right now there's all kinds of pathways open to people. And um, what are some resources, whether they're here at FIU or at other places that you would recommend people um, start either if they're considering, you know, what might be out there? Um, where, where would you send people? Sure. So if, 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 if you're an FIU alum, here's the, here's the pitch for FIU and our, our alumni and uh, the College of Business. If you're an FIU alum, I think the most important thing, number one, you want to get your FIU email activated, reactivated, get it memorized, because that mm -hmm. opens the door to a lot of different things. Um, from a, it just helps you from a technological stack perspective here. Um, here in the College of Business, you have access to the technology that we use. So you have access to Handshake. You have access to Interview Stream, which is uh, a, a, an interview practice tool that will let you practice your, your interviews on your desktop or on your laptop, um, and it will record you. You'll have access to a tool that we use called Pathway U, which answers the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? It's a, it's a diagnostic tool that you can take. So you have access to you have access to all of those things. Um, 
and um, that helps there with with you know that piece. So you can post your resume and handshake, and you can search for jobs, and you can start that. You also can start the networking piece. I think connecting with your former classmates and your friends on LinkedIn. Um, I think too often people overlook that, but or they they they're like connecting, and oh, I don't know if I want to connect. When I when LinkedIn first opened, one of the first things I did was I I hit the I was able to search by my graduation year and FIU, and I was just like I remember you, bam 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 bam. Um, some of them accepted, some of them didn't. That's fine. <laughs> um, I'm also a huge fan of so and along with that, it's it's not only that but also researching and following the right folks. So following the right folks on LinkedIn, and believe it or not, I like. And this is going to be semi-controversial, but I like Twitter. I like Twitter for uh, networking and following industry leaders. I think it's, you know, it's nice to see more people. If they did that, they'd be surprised how they at their interaction level. Um, people do reply to tweets. People do sometimes answer DMs. But but you get that interaction, and it's and it's really cool. And I like that a lot. I think I like it a little bit. I like it more than than LinkedIn. Um, it's not as it, it's a little trickier, but it's it's it, you definitely don't want to overlook that. I also think you need to do your research. So, um, it's 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 reading the paper every day. It's it's looking at uh, you know making that investment in yourself. Making that investment in yourself is going to pay off dividends no matter what. Um, you know, buying the subscription to the Herald, um, buying a subscription to the Wall Street Journal. Um, using your student email address so you can get the student rate of course mm -hmm. but, but that's, that's, a, that's a huge advantage because it keeps you up to date with what's going on um, sure. uh, reading you know looking at if, if you're if you're a fan of LinkedIn learning I think there's some great programs out there there's a lot of great free programs on there as well and then um, there's several books that have been published recently um, that I that I absolutely love. That I think there's some great career advice out there. That and it all centers around this this recalculation. It centers around getting your house in order, getting your health, getting your 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 head uh, mentally uh, mentally connected, and 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 you know getting yourself prepared to to make this change and jump. And there's a I have a very very good friend who has published a great book, and she has a famous quote that says you. Can can't fix work until you fix yourself. Mm. And, and I think, and that's very, very, very true. Yeah. So that's that's kind of how I would start that. Yeah. I almost think that's how we got to where we are right now, because I think people have spent time fixing themselves um, over the last, you know, 18 months or so. And now they're as a result, making some of these, these shifts in their professional lives. Yeah. So Although I, I didn't that. work out at all. And so <laughs> I like totally missed that window. I'm so well, jealous of some of those friends of mine. I'm like, man, I got kids. I don't got time for this. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, there's plenty of other ways to, to work on yourself beyond just that. But yes, absolutely. Um, I think that that has all kind of contributed to this great resignation and where we find find ourselves here in the workplace and um, in the marketplace. And uh, our second session on Wednesday is going to talk more about optimizing your digital footprint. So we'll dive more into this was a perfect segue, John. I didn't prep you for that, but that was great. Uh, we're going to jump more into LinkedIn and, um, you know, making sure that you are ready, um, you know, as you said, get your house in order because those things don't just happen on their own. You do have to be, you know, proactive and put in the time. And um, our next speaker is, is going to basically pick up right there. So I guess we'll, we'll stop there because that was a perfect um, transition for us. Um, John, any closing thoughts um, that you want to give people? I, I, I want to thank you. This was a hell of a lot of fun. It's always good to give back and, and you guys do a great job and it's homecoming week and I'm really excited for uh, all the great programming and all the work and the hard work that you all are doing. So thank you for that. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you yeah. for, uh, for letting me come on and chat. I, I think it's great. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited uh, for our, our students, for our future alumni. I think um, we're in a great spot. Uh, FIU is a sought after school for recruiters and employers. And it, you know, it, again, like I said earlier, uh, crisis opportunity and, and, and 
striking now while you can. It's important to do that now. We cannot lose sight that this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's a a once in a lifetime spot in the industry and we have to, you have to fully take advantage of it. Yeah. And it won't last forever. Right. I mean, no, well, we know markets go up and down. Pendulums always swing left and right. It'll be a candidate rich market and then it will be a, it will be a client rich market and the employers will have the upper hand. And, and so you have to take advantage now while you can. Excellent. Thank you so much, John. And we could talk forever, but I really appreciate um, your viewpoint on this, being an expert in this area. Um, so just uh, to let everyone know, on Wednesday, we'll be back with the second part of our series, as I mentioned. Um, we'll have another great FIU alumnus, um, Savannah Masalo, who will be picking up on these points, talking more about optimizing your digital footprint um, to really help you make that career change once you're ready. So, John, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And um, I hope this is a really impactful session for everybody. So we'll see you on Wednesday. See you. Thanks.